Listen, there's been a few days for this to settle down, and I just want to ask a little bit about Bob Saget. So this will be Bob Saget, Full House, you know, America's Dad. See what you think. If you um, if you like the video, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you will subscribe. It makes a big difference, and it means that I can continue doing these videos. And um, But in any event, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. This one kind of got close to home for me. You know, his last performance was near Jacksonville, Florida, which is where I'm from, in Ponte Vedra Beach is where he, uh, he performed the last, then he went on to Orlando, uh, got a hotel for his next gig, and that's where, where you know, he died. And we're almost the same age. I'm 64, he was 65. So um, this one's uh, a little personal for me. So I'll just get on with it. So the first question is, were actually, were drugs really uh, to blame for Bob Saget's death? I'm curious, and I'm sure we all are. Uh, number two, was COVID even perhaps a factor in his death? I mean, it's so uh, this last strain is so easily uh, uh, caught, and so I wonder if that uh, maybe had something to do with it. We'll ask the cards. Number three, uh, was someone responsible for his death directly? And then number four, just a Celtic cross to see what the cards will tell us about Bob Saget. I think that's fair. Here's what Wiki says. 1956, Robert Lane Saget was born to a Jewish family in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on May 17th. So he's a Taurus, or he was a Taurus. And uh, his dad was a supermarket executive. His mom was a hospital administrator. And they lived in Encino, Los Angeles for a while before moving back to Philadelphia. Now, in 1975, Bob graduated from high school, expected to become a doctor. Uh, but his honors English teacher saw his creative potential and urged him toward a film career. And he attended Temple University's film school and created a black and white film about a boy who received reconstructive facial surgery, which received an award merit in the uh, school's uh, Academy Awards. And then in 1978, he graduated with a bachelor's and intended to take graduate courses at the University of Southern California, but quit after only a few days. And he described himself in a 1990 Saturday Evening Post as a cocky, overweight 22 year old. Then on the 4th of July, he had a gangrenous appendix uh, taken out. The hospital had only iced the area for seven hours before operating and he almost died. So he says he got over being cocky or overweight. Uh, in 1982, Saget married. They had three daughters, Aubrey, Laura Melanie, and Jennifer Bell. In 1987 to 95, Bob was cast as how we all know him, the dad, Danny Tanner, in Full House. And then 1989 to 97, he was also the original host of America's Funniest Home videos, America's Funniest Home Videos. Uh, in 1996, Bob directed a television movie called For Hope, which was inspired actually by the life of his own sister, Gay Saget. Saget. Uh, she had uh, scleroderma, scleroderma, a chronic hardening and contraction of the skin and connective tissue that occurs either locally or throughout the whole body. And his sister died, had only died, died only three years uh, earlier. And then in 1997, the Bob Sagets got divorced. In 1998, he directed his first feature film, Dirty Work, uh, which became a cult favorite. And Bob also made a cameo appearance as a co cocaine addict in the stoner comedy, Half-Baked. And he's also known for his adult-oriented uh, stand-up comedy, very trash mouth. In 2001, he, one, he took on another widowed dad role, Raising Dad. And then in 2005, he was uh, part of a song with uh, Rollin' with Saget about a night out with him that shows off his raunchier uh, behaviors. Bob even did vocals on the track. And the video appeared on MTV, and he also used it as a Suedo theme song on his stand-up tour, tours and website. Then in 2005, uh, he wrote, directed, and starred in a parody of the March of the Penguins called The Farce of the Penguins. And in 2005 to 2010, he had a recurring role in four episodes of the HBO TV series Entourage, playing a parody of himself. And then 2005 to 14, he was the voice of the future who narrated, narrated How I Met Your Mother. I didn't know that. 2006 to 2008, he was a host of NBC's game show One Versus 100. 
And then 2007, his HBO comedy special, That Ain't Right, came out on DVD dedicated to his father, who died at age 89 uh, that January due to complications from congestive uh, heart failure. Is that what got uh, Bob also? Uh, he also appeared in the Broadway musical The Drowsy Chaperone in 2008, and his character was unveiled at Sardi's uh, restaurant. Now, 2009, he debuted in a sitcom called Surviving Suburbia and returned to co-host AFV for the 20th anniversary one-hour special. And then in uh, 2010, that was America's Funniest Home Videos. And then in 2010, he starred in a series, Strange Days, where he followed others in different activities and lifestyles, documenting their adventures in unusual ways. In 2014, his book Dirty Daddy was released. He writes about his career, comedy influences, and experiences with life and death. Uh, the same year, he toured Australia for the first time with a stand-up show, The Dirty Daddy Tour, in Perth, Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. And his uh, comedy album, That's What I'm Talking About, was nominated for a Grammy. Uh, 2015 and 16, he guest starred in two episodes of Grandfathered, uh, starring and produced by his good friend and Full House co-star, you know him, John Stamos. And then 2016 to 20, he reprised his role as Danny Tanner for 10 episodes of Full House's sequel series called Fuller House including its uh, series premiere and finale. Then in 2018, second married TV host Kelly Rizzo. 2019, he was the host... Oh, I've lost my place. He was the host of Videos After Dark and hosted the game show Nashville Squares. Plus, he was a panelist on To Tell the Truth, which I love that show. In 2020, he launched a podcast titled Bob Saget's, uh, here for, Bob Saget's Here for You with Studio 71. And, oh, he competed. I'm sorry. He competed in season four of The Masked Singer as Squiggly Monster. And then in 2022, Bob was staying at the uh, Ritz-Carlton Orlando and had performed at Ponte Vedra Beach near Jacksonville, Florida uh, the previous evening. You know, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. And he was found unresponsive in his room by hotel staff at 4 p.m. He had missed his scheduled checkout time and uh, family members were concerned, uh, unable to contact him. Emergency responders pronounced him dead at the scene. He was 65, and news of his death broke during a broadcast of America's Funniest Home Videos. Let's see what the cards can tell us about Bob. Okay, so this is the Housewives Tarot, a domestic divination kit with deck and instruction book by Paul Keppel and Jude Buffum, and this is put out by Quirk uh, uh, Press, I guess it's called. So this is so neat. It's reminiscent of a recipe box, and it's it's really sturdy, solid, thick cardboard, and it's got so many cool illustrations on the outside. It was only about sixteen dollars, and um, and then it's even got here uh, guaranteed by the housewife occultists of America. Just really neat. Okay, so if we go inside. The first thing you're going to notice is that it's set up just like a recipe box. The first little card here, you'll see it says uh, the Housewife Tarot. And then on the back of this, it just tells you about the publisher and the uh, copyrights and that sort of thing. But the second card is labeled as the Major Arcana. Okay. And then the back of it is an actual real recipe. I mean, I've read the recipe. You can make this. This one's called the Icebox um, fortune cake. And I won't read the recipe, but I'll just tell you this cool uh, little thing it says is for use with the Neapolitan spread. The spread is referring to, I think, four or six uh, ways to divine the card, to spread the cards out. So this is for use with the Neapolitan spread. And it, says, and it says here, eat this cake quickly before your past, present, and future start melting together. Really, you know, just cute. Uh, the first section here had the major arcana in here separately. Of course, I've mixed up the cards and, and shuffled them, so it's not that anymore, but I put that little group there so you can see what it looked like. The second um, card here is the uh, Minor Arcana uh, card, recipe card. Again, another recipe that you can actually prepare. This is like deviled eggs, but they've called it here divinated eggs instead of deviled eggs. And it says for use with the dinette spread, so like a dinette table. And it says you'll never go back to deviled eggs once you've had them divinated. Really cool and a decent recipe. The third um, card, which I've got out of, uh, and then, the, of course, the uh, pip cards, the minor, minor arcana with it. The third card, which was actually uh, here, uh, it talks about the instruction booklet. And I'll pull it out, and it says, yep, instruction booklet. And then on the back, another recipe. And this is his Madame Marlena's Mystical Martini. It's for use with the martini spread, which is another spread they recommend. And also, it's an, all, an, an actual, actual recipe you could prepare. The booklet itself is amazing. It's a really good quality 
of booklet, okay? It's got full color and really great, uh, interesting divinations for the cards. But the first part is what's so cool. The first page here tells you one, two, three, four, five different spreads that you could uh, lay the cards out in, they suggest, they've developed. And then this, I'll just tell you this first little paragraph and then a last sentence, because this is, just gives you an idea of how uh, quirky and how interesting this thing is written. It says right here, regarding the mystical housewife's tarot, the legend, uh, according to gossip, the housewife's tarot was introduced by housewife extraordinaire Marlene Louise Weatherby in the early 1950s. She was a happy homemaker who seemed to have it all, a devoted husband, obedient children, a sparkling home that was the talk of the town, a fashion sense to die for, and for more than her fair share of, and more far more than her fair share of women's intuition very cool and then just the last sentence is so neat it says here just how exactly did Marlene acquire these mis this mystical knowledge? Whether, Whenever pressed, she kept her lips sealed tighter than Tupperware. Marlene took her secret to the grave, bless her heart, and the origin of the housewife's tarot shall remain shrouded in mystery forevermore. Just really, really very thoughtful, everything about this. So if you can't tell, I'm loving the deck. So that's the box. The cards, uh, actually, they're a decent weight of cards, okay? They're not too slick. And uh, this kind of looks like a tablecloth, doesn't it? And then, uh, let me lay them out for you. The, the are different, um, the Major Arcana and then the Minor uh, Pip cards have their own kind of color-coded uh, sequencing here. Major Arcanas are circled in black. The uh, cups are in blue and uh, green for the pentacles, etc. and so forth. And they're very colorful. They're easy to divine. The only thing I would say is that this Empress, for instance, is the number two of the Major Arcana. And in typical Rider Waite system, number two is the High Priestess. And if I'm not mistaken, the High Priestess in this was actually labeled as a number three, which would be the Empress. So that doesn't quite uh, me meld with the uh, Rider Waite system, but they're easy enough to divine because I tell you right here what this card is supposed to be. You know, I lay the cards out like this so that you get a chance to see more than just the few that come out when we do a reading. And um, to also give you an example of, the, you know, if you're doing a reading for someone, they can do this too and uh, lay the cards out and you kind of get their energy in you know, them if you don't particularly want them to shuffle them, which I don't particularly like people to shuffle my cards because I kind of shuffle them uh, not in a, um, you know, not in a, a rough manner. So here we have it, the Housewives Tarot. Really great. Okay, Bob Saget. But you know what we're going to do first? We're just going to have a moment of meditation. It. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Bob Saget. Bob Saget. Were drugs really to blame for Bob Saget's death? We're going to have four questions here. Three of them will be um, three card draws, and the last one will be a full Celtic cross. And the first question were drugs really to blame for Bob Saget's death? Were drugs somehow to blame for Bob Saget's death? Yeah, three cards. Don't like that. Let's do it again. For drugs, Bob Saget. Bob Saget. Bob Saget. Bob Saget's death and drugs. Were drugs really to blame in Bob Saget's death? Three cards. One, two, and three. Were drugs really to blame in Bob Saget's death? First card for that is the Nine of Cups. Uh, the Nine of Cups is the greedy merchant, uh, wishes fulfilled. Cups are compassion, emotion. And uh, so this doesn't look like that's, a, I don't think so. The second card for that, oh, ill intention. The Devil card, Vice. You know what I'm thinking is going on here? Look at this great big piece of cake, this uh, cheese, coffee, ham, cheap TV dinners. And what is that? This is Valium. So let's see what the last card is. Uh, the Magician. Really having everything at your disposal. Were drugs really to blame for Bob Saget's death? I think um, with this Nine of Cups here, the Greedy Merchant. So this shows us that, you know, I think what this shows us that emotionally, uh, compassionately, he was just out trying to make the best living he could for his family. Okay, with these gifts. This is Bob, and this is his family, actually. <clears throat> Along the way, he was tied to ill intention, but it wasn't drugs, I think, in the way that we think it is. It was vice, 
you know, look, drink. It was a uh, bad food. Yeah. Let me have a drink here. And in the end, <coughs> he thought he was a magician. He thought he had all the answers. I think it was just a bad habit of living. I don't think it was illegal drugs. <coughs> the next question, was COVID a factor in Bob Saget's death? Was COVID a factor in Bob Saget's death? Was COVID a factor in Bob Saget's death? Three cards. One, two, and three. It's COVID a factor in Bob Saget's death. Strength. So this tells me no. And clean. Okay. The Hierophant. This uh, can be the rules that you have to live by. The structure that's guiding your life. And the structure that was guiding his life at this moment was getting those tour dates done, making a living, hitting all the marks from city to city to city to city to city. That's stress. The final is the Two of Cups, finding the uh, perfect um, uh, emotional companionship. So the question is, was COVID a factor in his death? No, I don't think so. Um, he, he had strength. Uh, this is a, a clean uh, bill of health, really. Uh, the Hierophant, though, in the center of this, really speaks to me of the uh, regiment of doing the work, going club to club, city to city, state to state, you know, getting this done. In the last years of his life, he was putting on weight and looking bloated. And the Two of Cups, as the final thing, was finding that true companionship. Because this is the last card in this reading, I think, you know, he was looking for that true emotional companionship and getting his job done. And maybe that's just not, he, maybe he just didn't reach it. So the next question, was someone responsible for his death? And is, as in, was someone, you know, um, some dark uh, person, some uh, Ill, someone with ill intention, was someone with ill intention? responsible for his death was someone with ill intention like directly responsible for his death i'm not talking about an agent that overbooked him i'm talking about was someone viciously maliciously uh responsible for his death was someone maliciously viciously responsible for his death this will be three cards and then we'll do a six card after this was someone maliciously responsible for his death one two three okay was someone responsible for his death. First card, Page of Wands. So the page is the least uh, strong of the uh, court cards, and the wands are actions, motions, uh, plans, getting a thing done. The Page of Wands is bringing the suggestion to the court, and then the court has to make decisions of what's going to be done. I think this is going to, um, what I was speaking of, that, you know, being overbooked, uh, having a lot of work to do. I think someone has brought these plans to him, uh, but that person was just a weak suggestion, a page of wands. Listen, let's do these uh, 10 tour dates. And uh, what do you think, boss? Because he would be the boss, Bob Saget. The uh, next card of that is the three of wands. So that's long-term plans. Yeah, this was this was Bob trying to get his long-term goals uh, done, getting the, uh, storing up that money for his long-term plan. And then the final card for that is this king of swords, truth, justice, rules, law, or really being in control of your own truth, justice, rules, law. This was Bob Saget. He was responsible. He took on the responsibility for the uh, suggestions that were made to him. Um, he was had, did it with the best of intentions, looking out for long-term plans of his life. And uh, but he was the one who uh, was responsible for his death. That's interesting. Um, by by overworking, taking on too much work. Where a lot of us are that person. Um, and then the full Celtic cross. Uh, tell us, just tell us about Bob Staggett. Full Celtic cross. Full Celtic cross. Just tell us a story about Bob Saget. Tell us a story about Bob Saget. Six cards at the beginning, and then we'll get four more. Six cards. Tell us about Bob Saget. What can the cards tell us about this man, Bob Saget? Bob Saget's story. Let's see. The signifier for that story of Bob Saget is a five of pentacles 
and uh, the Five of Pentacles is being left out in the cold. So maybe feeling that you know, you're not getting all of the value that you should have. You can see that one of these plates of value is broken. And so it looks like, yeah, that would be him trying to store up all the value that he can and feeling that maybe he lost some. The uh, challenge to that then is the lovers. Wow, that's amazing. And for me, this is his companionship, of course, with his wife, with his children, with the people in his life that were important to him. But we see that this car has kind of gone off the rails and it's headed into the water. So his love for those that were important to him could be what drove him, drove him, interesting, uh, to uh, ruin. The base of this reading then, Bob Saget's life, with his three of swords is a broken heart. So that's sad. Um, swords of truth, justice, rules, and law. Uh, broken heart at the base of this is um, really, I think, his compassion for his family. Uh, the past of this is the cherry. And this thing's coming on at a fast pace. And look what's in these cans that these women are carrying here. There's uh, risk. There's gain. There's, I don't know what that one is. And I don't know what the, this one is. But um, risk and gain. And a family wagon. Look at that. So that's what was driving uh Again, him. Uh, the sky of this reading with this Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is illusion and delusion. Okay, this is very telling because again, it speaks to a lifestyle on the road. Look, drinks. These are these are alcoholic uh, drinks that represent you know a fast life, not making the best choices for yourself. Wow. The um, likely outcome of the first part of this then is the Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, looking for the most value that you could possibly get. And again, in the in the um, in, uh, indicative of family values, really, with that uh, woman's uh, glove that you would use to wash dishes. So interesting. So um, more about the life about Bob Saget. Uh, the uh, signifier of this question about Bob Saget then is this four of wands. Four of wands are um, wands are plans. Um, uh, uh, actions forward moving. We can see here that the, in their short term celebrations, and look, this person is leading the high life with a great big huge martini in their hand, uh, uh, planning the short term uh, uh, celebration, getting uh, things lined up in the short term towards a better picture in the long term. The um, environment that that's in is a hierophant. Yep, getting all those rules, all that structure together that um, that you, that is guiding your life, following all those rules that uh, maybe he, he put in place himself. All the structure that he thought was important. Uh, the hopes and the fears for that. With this seven of swords, seven of swords is uh, you know a theft. Um, swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And the seven of swords is. Um, you know, maybe you took something from those people that are important from you by working so hard, going after the money, uh, going after the secu security. Some people are the happiest people are, are, can be the people who have the least. And then the um, it's going after the wrong goals. The final outcome, king of wands. Um, so this is being the king of the plans. And that's who he was. And look at this king. He's collapsed into the chair. He seems happy, doesn't he? But it looks like kind of a forced smile. And look at all the work that he's holding up in front of him. So yeah, I think this is a perfect reading about Bob's life. So uh, we said, tell us about his life. So he was uh, the five of pentacles. He was feeling left out and cold regarding the value that he thought he was, he was, he should have. Um, the challenge to that was the lovers and that's his family. That's his love for his family. He drove that car right into a ditch. Um, the bottom of this with this three of swords, this broken heart is just showing us that, I mean, this kind of speaks to itself. All of this uh, came to this. Uh, the chariot in the past is really that family car, uh, risk, gain, really trying to find that uh, balance coming on so quickly. And the seven of cups, uh, really illusion and delusion. All these nice, wonderful uh, alcoholic drinks seem like they're just what you need, but um, are they really? And then with this Ace of Pentacles and the likely outcome is he was just trying to collect up as much of those uh, Pentacles as he could. The uh, Four of Wands here in the self of that question, again, it's short-term plans, short-term celebrations towards something bigger, but at the same time still with that uh, theme of too much. Um, the Hierophant is really the, um, the vehicle that you chose to live your life on. And it's funny that this would be a radio or maybe a television and that he was an entertainer. The um, 
uh, hopes and the fears for all of this with the seven of swords is just that abuse of, of yourself. The, the, and then the final outcome is that with this king of wands, he was, he was the king of all of that work. And it's what finally threw him into the chair and made him stop. Very interesting. Gosh, Bob, best intentions. Well, like I said in the beginning, you know, how do we know that this works? Um, I'm just eerily accurate a lot of the time. And stuff happens in my personal life that made led me to go ahead and film this stuff and put it out for you to watch. So I don't know why I'm rambling on, but uh, that's uh, what I got for Bob Saget. And I hope it meant something for you too. Rest in peace, Bob. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.